Hey, Dread Central fans, I'm Drew Tenen, and I'm here with Tuesday Night and Lisa Wilcox to talk about their film, The Bloody Man, coming out July 12th. Uh, it's amazing to talk to you guys. How are you? Fine. How are you? Fabulous. Doing great. It's, it's just awesome to see you two, two together. Um, you know, I don't get starstruck easily, um, but I definitely am right now seeing both of you. Um, are, are there any actors or musicians that you've been starstruck by in your careers or, or someone you haven't met yet that would have that effect on you? Yeah, definitely. I, I, mine would definitely be um, uh, Neil Finn of Crowded House. Or That's a good it would one. Be, yeah, he's awesome. And, or it would be uh, Cheryl Crow. Oh, wow. Okay. Mine would definitely be uh, Mark Hamill. Worked with him on a movie. I could not sleep the night before. I was so nervous, like a school, like a kid going to the first day of school. <laughs> and uh, and and um, George Clooney. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I'd have to go with Mark Hamill on that one. What did you work with him on? I'm drawing a blank. Yeah, it was called Watchers. It's based on uh, Dean Koontz's book Watchers, and we did the fourth installment. Right. It's the one closest related to the book, and uh, yeah. Yeah, it's a fun oh, movie I'm, actually. I'm gonna have to, yeah, I'm gonna have to add that to to my list uh, to to rewatch. I haven't seen that in ages. Um, oh. Well, I know that. I'm sure. I'm sure both of you get you know countless, you know horror projects and just projects in general um, sent your way, and you must turn a lot of them down. Um, was it a what was it about Bloody Man that made it stand out, and what's probably a, a giant pile of of scripts for you guys? Um, I think I think the Bloody Man stood out. To me because I thought the character was so um, interesting um, and I thought it was different than anything um, I've ever played. Um, like I say in every interview, the only thing that was hard for me was watching myself with the weight gain because I gained weight for this role. I wanted to be sort of like uh, more maternal and kind of, you know, just uh, different than myself. And um, I liked it because of that and because it had to do with the 80s uh, because I, the 80s were great and uh, that was really interesting. And it was just written well, and uh, Daniel Benedict it just won me over. He, he was he was awesome. Yeah, I, I'd say the '80s intrigue was really um, really fun, and and it definitely comes off in the film. I think you know, uh, I think we do too. Um, and I get to die. <laughs> <laughs> I I never get to. I only. I've died in like one thing in my entire career. So I was very excited to have like a gruesome death. <laughs> and I die, I die in almost everything I'm in. <laughs> I was gonna say yeah. like as, as an actor, it's usually you die in every movie pretty much or or you or you never die. Right, no, right. And I, yeah, I, the only I, thing I died in was Star Trek Next Generation. And uh, right. I, and I was murdered, I was killed, you know, anyway. Yes. Wow. So. On, on Star Trek, that's that's uh -huh. my okay. That's done. Yeah, they had to. Uh, I was. It turned out I was. Didn't I was genetically designed to kill a certain clan, and I couldn't stop myself. And and they had and Jonathan Frakes or Captain Riker were falling in love, but he had to phaser me. I'm but that. So but I ended up on the next gen Monopoly board as a property because it became oh. sort of a famous episode because they don't kill on Star Trek. That's like the opposite of what. Their intentions are anyway. Yeah, no, I love I love that there's a board game for that too, and I think there was supposed to be a board game for for Bloody Man. I don't know if that that uh, kicked in with the, the funds, but that would have been cool to have. Uh, you know, you could have been on two board games and uh, and had some some oh my freedom gosh. cards. Oh my gosh, that would have been so cool. Well, it was really fun with my kids with the Star Trek game. Like we would actually play with it. You know, and they're like, "Oh, I landed on mom." <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Yeah, there's not too many people that can say that. <laughs> right. <laughs> Especially your children. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like Tuesday, you really haven't been in too many horror films over your career. It's 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 surprising. I know that Lisa, that now you've returned to acting, it seems like you're kind of really diving into the genre. Yeah. Um a little bit more. I think uh, you know, I, if you look at my resume, I mean it really is not filled at all with horror films. I think I've done like three. Um, it just happened to be that I did Nightmare on Elm Street, which is the one that's, you know, so known. And um, that's usually always what I'm recognized for is that one. Um, but now, yeah, I, I've done, you know, a few. I mean, The Bloody Man to me was really awesome. So I was like, yeah, this part's really cool. Um, but I don't 
I don't do them normally. I, if they're really good, if you know, there's um, there's something going on in it, I, I will if it's a good character. Um, I'm doing one in New York uh, called Howl, which is which is about a werewolf. But the thing is, is that it's um, it's actually different than uh, than most werewolf movies. There's a really weird turn. It, it's with Edward Furlong. Um, and he's interesting. I, I, I don't know. I think it, it will be fun to, to work with him, you know. But I definitely got from the name that it was definitely headed towards the, um, the horror side of things. Howl. Yeah, I mean, one of my favorite werewolf movies of all time is set in New York, Wolfen. That's a really good one. So oh, you guys yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good one. Can draw some inspiration from that, maybe. Um, but yeah, Tuesday, yeah, like, as you mentioned in this movie, like, you, you do get to be kind of increasingly creepy in this, which must have been a fun arc to play. I mean, the, prospect, the prosthetics you get to wear are actually like pretty frightening. Like you, you genuinely creep me out in this movie. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> so thank you for that. That's, that's good. I guess I, I did my job then. I'm glad you did. <laughs> you totally did. Um, yeah, and I, I like how there, there, there are a lot of like 80s throwbacks in it. I know director Daniel Benedict definitely put in a lot of references with um, Shining, Myers, the My Michael Myers mask. Um, of course, there's Dream Warriors in there, but that's, I think, just more consistent with the time period. Um, and yeah, there's even a Captain Kirk poster, I think. So Lisa, that's maybe that's a little- <laughs> There do, is uh, a Captain Kirk poster, yes. <laughs> <laughs> what, what poster? Yeah, they were very creative in including fun little Easter eggs, as they call them, you know? Yeah, I was, what was it? What what was it oh, called? The poster? There was a there was a Star Trek Captain Kirk poster that was in there too, which I thought oh, was funny. okay. Even, in the okay. bedroom, even one for the old Dead Time Stories uh, anthology, which I think this the Bloody Man movie I think kind of feels almost like an anthology because there's so many flashbacks and um, yeah. some, some comics and inspirations and, and uh, mm -hmm. some animation. Mm -hmm. I yeah. feel like too, it has a little bit of a Stranger Things quality about it too, because of the kids. It does, yeah. Do, do do you have you guys watched season four? I mean, it has allusions to the Elm Street franchise, and it's nice. Seeing, oh yes, it's nice seeing Robert. I mean, is it something that you and your family has watched together? I haven't seen it yet. I'm gonna have to watch it. Oh yes, I binged the heck out of that thing, <laughs> and I cannot wait. In fact, today, July first, they're showing the last two episodes of season four. Right. So you know what I'm doing tonight. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, you bet. Better watch my other other movie too, Lisa. <laughs> I, I have a very busy schedule tonight on on my TV. Absolutely. Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah, because you. I don't know if the the movie you're referencing is Rideshare Killer. Is that is that the one you're? Yes. yes. Cool. That's so. That's on Tubi. I think Tubi's doing such a great job lately. They've got so many yeah lesser seen movies, and I'm really glad they're getting into original content. Yeah, it's also it's weird because it's also on uh, Amazon Prime too. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. Well, I was I was happy to hear some songs from from you in this Tuesday. Um, I you know I love the dream pop vibe uh, of them. I mean, they definitely fit in really well. Oh, thank you so much. Um, I you know he asked me for that of course because it was the '80s and I I just you know I I kind of went back to my roots and kind of wrote them because I love the '80s anyway. Sometimes things come out of me and they just they just are 80s you know what I mean? just the way I write <laughs> but uh but you know there are some stuff there there's stuff new stuff that I'm doing as well uh but yeah 80s is the best I think I love it yeah the bloody main title song I think it's it, it's not quite a, a throwback song it feels a lot more modern but it does I like that it plays at the very end credits and that's such a and it kind of explains the entire story and that's such a very 80s and early 90s thing to have the, the you know the theme song describing the plot as the credits roll I, I i missed that i thought that was a cool piece of nostalgia oh thank you because you know we i couldn't i you know we couldn't do it obviously for for the title song because it gives away the whole story so okay. he was like well, put it after you know like okay it's okay yeah were you were you both a little reluctant to appear together in this because of the inevitable comparisons you know to elm street or did you guys just embrace it no not at all no yeah no uh, uh, no, not at all. I mean, I know Lisa, you know, personally, I mean, we're good, good friends. I mean, we, you know, it, it would be, it always be an honor to work with her. So, you know, uh, no, <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm with you. yeah. I guess you guys have really been able to stay in touch too throughout, you know, the convention circuit and seeing each other, I think a lot that way as well. Right. 
Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. But also outside of conventions and stuff like that. In fact, a lot of the cast it's outside of conventions that we get together and uh, you know, it's it's interesting. I like Annette Benson who cast Nightmare on Elm Street one through five. I I, I told her you know. You did, did you realize you were casting like best friends for life, <laughs> you know? So. Yeah, she's really good. She probably did. I mean, between her and Raymond, yeah. I'm sure what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> well, it is, kind of, it is kind of a shame that you both don't have any scenes together in, in Bloody Man, but was that ever a possibility or something you both wanted to add or did the story, I guess, just not allow for that? I don't think I the think story allowed for it. No, because he died I, there before yeah. and I was, so yeah, I, I wish we would have had, I mean, it would have been great, but it was funny when I flew in, she flew out. It was like, I yeah, missed exactly. her by the <laughs> it was like, we didn't even get to see each other at all, but at least we're in the same movie again after three decades, right? <laughs> right. That is right. And we haven't aged a bit. That's the great thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly, darling. Um, what's, so what's next for you both? I mean, are there any convention appearances coming up? I think you'll both be at, at Scarefest at, in Chicago, maybe yeah. over Halloween. Yeah, Scarefest, yeah. Kentucky, right? Scarefest is in Kentucky, right? Yeah. Oh, and okay. then I'll be at a flashback weekend in Chicago in uh, August. Well, um, it was it was great talking to you both. And um, I hope you have an amazing weekend and good luck with Bloody Man and everything else you're doing. 